these waves exhibit a tremendous pounding force on this beach. This strong wind exhibits such a great force that it has the ability to blow down large trees like this one. And this big dump truck has the force or strength to carry huge heavy loads of rock. What is force? How does it affect motion? And how can it be computed? During the next few minutes, we'll try to answer these questions and others. So stick around as we consider force. This golf club hit or pushed this ball 200 meters downrange. These oxen are pulling over a 1,000 kilogram weight over 10 meters. And our sun exerts a pull on the planets in the solar system. All these examples involve force. A force is a push or a pull. In the examples just mentioned, force gives energy to objects causing them to start moving. But force can also stop moving objects, just as this linebacker can stop this running back by tackling him. Or this baseball player can stop the ball by catching it in his mitt. Force can also change the direction of moving objects, just as this tennis racket can change the direction of this tennis ball by hitting it. All these are examples of forces. If you think about it for a few minutes, you quickly realize that you use forces every day. You decide. Why are two horses needed to pull this wagon instead of one? Two horses add more force or pull to the wagon. The horses are combining forces, both pulling in the same direction. Just as this girl and her grandfather are combining forces in pushing this bale of hay. What happened here in terms of force? The cow is pulling in one direction and the boy is pulling in the opposite direction. The forces are unbalanced and the cow won. Decide. What force prevents this truck from skidding off the road? Friction. Friction exists whenever two objects come in contact with each other. Friction causes moving objects like this ball to slow down and eventually stop. The texture of a surface has a big effect on the amount of friction on an object. Lack of friction on the highway can be a big problem. For example, wet roads cause cars to lose friction, making driving dangerous. Centuries ago, it was found that wheels could help reduce friction. Dragging or sliding objects along the ground creates a great deal of friction. But wheels create very small points of contact with the ground, thus reducing friction and making the load easier to pull. One of the results of friction is heat. Try rubbing your hands together quickly for 10 seconds. Feel the heat. This is the result of friction. In some cases, tremendous amounts of heat are produced as a result of friction. This is why lubricants such as oil and grease are used to reduce the amount of friction between moving parts, thus reducing heat and engine wear. Over 300 years ago, a scientist by the name of Isaac Newton developed the laws of motion that are still of great importance today. Newton made a number of observations about the motion of matter that are now referred to as Newton's laws of motion. These laws of motion describe all the states of motion, including objects at rest, moving objects, and accelerated objects. Let's talk about Newton's first law of motion. Imagine throwing a ball and not having it stop. 
or coasting on a skateboard for a long distance with a single push. According to Newton, these things are possible except for one small problem, friction. Let's take a look at the effects of friction. Isaac Newton's first law of motion states that objects in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless acted upon by an outside force. The outside force most often at work is friction. Only in space, where there is very little air to create friction, can an object remain in motion at a constant velocity. The second part of Newton's first law of motion states that objects at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an outside force. In other words, this glass will remain in place until an outside force causes it to move. Newton referred to the tendency of an object to continue its state of motion as inertia. Inertia refers to an object's ability to resist change in motion. The more mass an object has, the more difficult it is to change its motion and the more inertia it possesses. The reason we wear safety belts is related to inertia. When a car stops suddenly, your body keeps moving and the seat belt holds you in place. You decide. What would you rather be hit by? A piece of paper accelerating 10 meters per second or a baseball accelerating 10 meters per second? This is an easy one. Of course, the paper would deliver a softer blow than the baseball. This is fundamental to understanding Newton's second law of motion, the relationship between acceleration, force, and mass. This relationship can be summarized by the mathematical equation force equals mass times acceleration. With the piece of paper, force equals 0 0.02 kilograms times 10 meters per second per second equals 0.2 kilograms meters per second per second. And the force of the baseball equals 0.25 kilograms times 10 meters per second per second equals 2.5 kilograms meters per second per second, over 10 times greater force than the moving paper. What would happen to the force of the moving baseball if the ball had a faster acceleration of, let's say, 20 meters per second per second? Looking at the formula, we see that the force equals 0.25 kilograms times 20 meters per second per second which equals 5 kilograms meters per second per second. As you can see, the faster accelerating baseball produces an even greater amount of force. You decide. What causes this model rocket to be thrust skyward over 150 feet? The model rocket goes up due to a strong opposite downward force. The same principle that is responsible for causing planes to take off and for large rockets to launch into space. These vehicles are propelled skyward as a result of an oppositely applied force. Newton's third law of motion explains this principle. It states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We're affected by Newton's third law of motion every day. When we walk, we exert a force on the ground, and the ground exerts a force upward against our feet. Birds fly using this law as well. When a bird flaps its wings downward, the air pushes upward or produces resistance, allowing the bird to push off of the air under it. In review, Newton's first law of motion states an object in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless acted upon by an outside force. Newton's second law of motion demonstrates the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. 
And Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. An apple falling from an apple tree, giving rise to Newton's theory of gravity, was an important discovery in helping us better understand our world. You're experiencing the force of gravity at this very moment. It's the force that holds you and all the other objects around you in place. Gravity is the force of attraction between two objects. Objects on Earth are pulled toward the center of the Earth. And Newton concluded that objects in the universe are attracted to Earth by the force of gravity. This is summarized by the law of universal gravitation, which states that all objects in the universe are attracted to each other by the force of gravity. Gravity is an important force as related to weight. Weight is a measure of the force of gravity on an object. Weight is measured in Newton units. This car weighs about 8,000 Newtons, but weight varies with the amount of gravity placed on an object. You decide. Do you think the car would weigh more, less, or the same on the moon? The force of gravity on the moon is one-sixth the force of gravity on Earth. This causes the car on the moon to weigh less than on Earth. Even though the weight of the car can be different, its mass stays the same. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. In the late 1500s, the Italian scientist Galileo elaborated on the principle of gravity by applying it to falling objects. In a famous experiment, Galileo dropped two cannonballs off the Leaning Tower of Pisa. One cannonball had ten times the mass of the other. Let's do the same from the top of this building with two rocks of different size. You decide. Which rock will hit the ground first? As you can see, both rocks hit the ground at the same time. Galileo also found the same thing with the cannonballs. Galileo stated that objects of different masses fall at equal rates of acceleration. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second, irregardless of the size and mass of the object. This means that every second that an object falls, its velocity increases at a rate of 9.8 meters per second. Let's see how this works by dropping this baseball a distance of 9.8 meters. At 9.8 meters above the ground, the object has zero velocity. After the object has fallen one second, it is going 9.8 meters per second. Therefore, you can see that objects continue to accelerate and gain velocity as they fall. This is true until an object reaches its terminal velocity, a point where it no longer accelerates. During the past few minutes, we've explored forces and Newton's laws of motion. We've observed that a force is a push or a pull, and that force can change the direction of moving objects. Forces can combine with each other to make a greater force, or they can oppose each other. We also observe that friction is a powerful force which occurs when objects come in contact with each other. Sir Isaac Newton developed several laws of motion which apply to different states of motion. Newton's first law of motion states that an object in motion will remain in motion at a constant velocity unless another force interferes. Newton's second law of motion describes how mass and acceleration affect force. And Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. 
Finally, we learned how Galileo determined that falling objects with different masses have equal rates of acceleration. Next time you observe moving objects, try to remember some of the things we've discussed during the past few minutes. You just might look at the world a little differently. Fill in the correct word when you hear this tone. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one, A is a push or pull. Number two, exists when moving objects come into contact. Number three, one of the effects of friction is Number four, objects remaining at rest or continually in motion have Number five, Newton's second law of motion describes the relationship of force, mass, and Number six, force equals times acceleration. Number seven, for every action, there is an equal and opposite Number eight, the force of is an attraction between objects. Number nine, is the measure of the force of gravity on an object. And number 10, objects with different masses fall at rates of acceleration.